Hi everyone, welcome back to Workshop and it's part two of the Wavetech 1281 multimeter repair. Now in the first video, which I'll link down below, you saw me going through the relays on the 1281, the ones that were changed out by the owner of the 1281, all seven relays. And I was investigating whether they were actually suitable for the 1281 given the specification of the original relays. And I kind of came to the conclusion that the Panasonic relays that had been fitted are not suitable because they're dual coil set reset relays. When the original relays fitted were actually single coil. Now although both types of relays are latched the drive circuitry within the 1281 is only capable of driving one relay. And apparently the single coil latch relays that are fitted originally to the 1281 are actually quite hard to find replacements for. And probably hence why the Panasonics were fitted, the dual coil ones were fitted to the 1281 by the owner. So in this video I want to go through the relays and let's have a look and see are those Panasonics, even though they're dual coil relays, are they actually suitable? And here's a schematic for the relays. You can see the dual coil relays there and then the single coil ones along the top. At first look you think well a single coil relay is not going to be latched but in actual fact they are latched. In order to set them you put a positive polarity across the coil and to actually unset them you actually reverse that polarity. So the 1281 must be continuously reversing the polarity across the coil in order to turn the contacts on and off. But on the dual coil relays you don't need to do that. You just have two independent coils for setting and unsetting the contacts. And here on the schematic diagram that I showed in the last video, you can actually see how that's taken place. I mentioned this 7 volts here that's generated by this standalone op-amp circuit. It goes onto one side of all the relays. Now that 7 volts actually quite important because the supply to the circuit is 15 volts. So in order to set or unset those contacts, you need to reverse the polarity of that coil. And it can do that by setting 15 volts via this logic output here onto the pin 1 of that relay and you'll get a positive polarity left to right across that coil. But then if you drive that logic output down to 0 volts, you'll get the reverse 0 volts and 7 volts. So it'll be effectively reverse polarity. And of course, as I mentioned in the last video, this output here can also go tri-state, i.e. high impedance and the relay won't be energized at all. So this circuit here, all it's doing is pulsing that relay to set it because it's latched and then pulsing it again with the reverse polarity to unset it. And actually there's a nice little trick you can do with these Panasonic relays or most relays that have got dual coil latched is that you don't need to use the second coil. If you just drive the first coil and reverse polarity in the same way as the original relays, it will actually set and unset. Now that's out with the manufacturer's specifications on how to use those relays, but it does actually work. However, there can be problems in doing that, and that's because the armature inside the relay that's driven by the coil is normally set up mechanically to be pushed by the set coil and pushed by the unset coil. But dropping it into the 1281 in exactly the same way without any modifications and just driving the one coil with reverse polarity, you're actually relying on, okay, you're pushing it to set it, but you're relying on pulling it to unset it. And that armature wasn't designed to be pulled to unset it. But from what I can see, it does actually work. Now the other alternative is, I could go through the original relays that were removed from the board and see if they're actually faulty. The reason they were changed out 
by the owner of the 1281 is because he thought it, the contacts might have been welded when some of the traces were burnt out on the board. There was obviously a high current that got fed in through the inputs and because the 1281 wasn't changing range I think he thought that possibly some of the relays had been damaged so he just went and changed out seven of them. So I think what I'll do in the first instance I'm going to go through the original relays I've made a little test jig on a breadboard to actually test the relays and we'll see if any of them are actually faulty. And here is the test jig that I've built up. You've got the relay here, you've got a bunch of LEDs on the contacts, the four contacts on those relays and I've actually got a 4013 flip-flop and a 555 and a small H-bridge circuit down there. But let's go to the schematic for this and I'll show you how it works. So the idea is I want to reverse the polarity of the coil on the relay and I want it to go back and forward, back and forward so that I can see the relay setting and unsetting. So here's the coil here for the relay and I've got a little H-bridge circuit here consisting of two P-type FETs and two N-type FETs and I've got them driven from a 4013 flip-flop. And what that's doing is you've got a signal coming in here, just a simple square wave coming in here into the clock and a divide by two setup as we used to call it which basically when Q goes high, Q bar goes low and they'll just continually flip back and forward as the square wave comes in. And that will turn on and turn off the FETs on the H bridge. When this one here's turned on, this one here's turned on and vice versa. And that will effectively reverse the polarity across the coil of the relay. However, the supply to the H bridge, I just didn't want to tie it to plus 5 volts or whatever. And the reason for that is, I didn't want this P type turned on, this N type turned on, and then when they turn off, I didn't want these two to turn on immediately or almost exactly the same time. I wanted a little bit of a gap, a resting time, before flipping the polarity. And that's where the 555 comes in. I've got it tied to the input signal coming in here through an NPN transistor and what that does is the supply to the actual H bridge has a square wave going to it also. But the duration of the high on that pin 3 ensures that it turns off before the H bridge flips. So let's go down onto the breadboard, I'll turn it on and we'll see it running. And I'm using my DMM continuity tester to generate the input square wave because I've got good control over the mark and space timing for that square wave. So here's a relay here, there's the four LEDs. I've fitted an S2-L-6V, one of the original relays, and because it's an S2, it means there are two normally open and two normally closed contacts. And you can see the relay seems to be working perfectly. The H bridge is doing its job and reversing the polarity across the coil and I'm getting the normally open and normally closed contacts flipping back and forward. And because it's the S2 type relay, it's actually got two normally open and two normally closed. So that relay would appear to be working perfectly. Now before I go and test all the other original relays, I'm actually going to plug in one of the Panasonics. Like I said earlier, you should be able to use just one of the coils on that relay and it still be able to set and unset. So let's try that. So I'll just go and change out that relay and I'll come back. Okay, there's the Panasonic fitted. This is an S4 one because I don't have any loose uh, S2 ones. They're all fitted to the 1281. So we should see on this one all LEDs come on at the same time and go off at the same time and it would appear to be working. So that trick of just using one coil and ignoring the other coil seems to be okay. Now there is one other thing that needs to be looked at to verify is do I use the set coil or do I use the unset coil? Because both of them will work, it's just that the normally open and normally closed contacts would be flipped and that would be bad inside the 1281. In order to verify that, I think I'll fit another LED across the coil so we can see what it's doing. And there we go, I fitted two LEDs actually, a blue one and a yellow one, and they're fitted back to back so that each one will indicate the polarity 
of the coil when it's being driven and you can see the pulses to set and unset that coil are not overlapping like I mentioned earlier. So driving the set coil and leaving the unset coil disconnected you can see that the yellow LED is the one that turns on these LEDs here closes those contacts. The blue one is responsible for turning them off. So I need to put back in the original relay and see if we're getting the same functionality or perhaps the reverse. And there we go, I've got an original S4 relay plugged in and you can see driving that coil the yellow one is responsible for turning the LEDs on. So yes, I just need to use the set coil on the Panasonic relays. So what next? Well, I think I'm going to go through all the original relays and just check to see if they're working or not. Well, I've gone through all the 6 volt relays and they're all working. So it looks like there was nothing wrong with any of these relays in the first place. Now of course, there's no high current or anything like that going through them, so who knows whether the contacts might stick or not, but they appear to be okay. The only one I haven't tested is the 24 volt one, because that won't work on this setup here. But I can easily test this one, it's not a latching relay, it doesn't have the L in the part number, so it's just a simple 24 volt relay, easily tested on a power supply. So there's the Panasonic back in, just to double check it's okay, I've been leaving it for a while. I've also increased the voltage to the breadboard to 7 volts because that's what it's going to see in the actual 1281. So the coil is going to be pulsed with a 7 volt signal rather than the 5 volt rated signal that the coil is. But because it's being pulsed it looks like you get away with it. Now there is actually another way of driving the Panasonic dual coil relays in the 1281 that makes use of both the coils. However that actually involves cutting one track on the board to the relay coil and fitting a couple of diodes on the back side of the board. And I'm not really sure I want to do that either, given that the relays, the Panasonic relays, appear to be working perfectly. So the question is, what do I do? Do I just leave the Panasonics in, or do I fit the original relays back into the 1281? Well, actually, I'm going to leave them in for the time being, because the problem's obviously not to do with the relays. The problem with the 1281 is obviously somewhere else, perhaps on the drive to those relay coils, or perhaps somewhere else completely. However, at the end of the day, if I get it up and running, I'm going to leave it to the owner of the 1281 to decide, does he want the original relays put in, or does he want to leave the Panasonics in? I'll leave it up to him, and I'll do it either way.